welcome back, secondary educators. Glad to have you. Uh, hopefully you have boned up on the division algorithm because we are ready for something just a little bit bigger. Let's do that. Let's take a look first at a lemma that sets up the Euclidean algorithm. Uh, so here's the lemma. Uh, we're going to let A and B be integers with B not zero. And we'll suppose that A is Q times B plus R as in the division algorithm, which means that Q and R are integers. R is between zero and the absolute value of B. Then the greatest common divisor of A and B is the greatest common divisor of B and R. The greatest common divisor of A and B is the greatest common divisor of B and R. Uh, and our proof on this is to show that this number is, the, that we're going to show that the divisors of A and B are the same as the divisors of B and R. And therefore, the greatest common divisor of A and B has to be the greatest common divisor of B and R. We're going to show that the set of divisors of A and B is the set of divisors of B and R. How do we show that two sets are equal? We show that one is a subset of the other and the other is a subset of the one. Let's go first that way, showing that all of these divisors are also divisors of A and B. Uh, so we consider the set of divisors of B and R. If D is a divisor of B and R, then D divides B and D divides R. D divides B and D divides R. Well, if D divides B and D divides R, then D divides this sum And so D divides A as needed, because if D divides B and D divides A, then D is in this set. Go the other way. Consider the set of divisors of A and B. If a number D is a divisor of A and B, then D divides B and D divides a. Well, if D divides this sum and D divides B, then D has to divide R as needed. So the divisors of B and R are the same as the divisors of A and B. So the greatest common divisor of A and B is the greatest common divisor of B and R as needed. And that establishes the lemma. The lemma is important because it leads directly to the Euclidean algorithm. And the Euclidean algorithm says the following. We let A and B uh, be positive integers, and we make A be at least as big as B is. If B divides A, then the greatest common divisor of A and B is just B. But if, oh, I should set that off a little bit. If B does not divide A, then we apply the division algorithm repeatedly. Uh, A is equal to Q times B plus R. Uh, where zero is less than or equal to, well, not less than or equal to, because B doesn't divide A. Zero is less than R is less than B, but then B is equal to Q times, uh, wait a minute, that's, that's a different Q. Let's index those. Uh, there's a Q sub zero and an R sub zero. 
then B is Q sub 1 times R sub 0 plus a remainder 1, where that remainder 1 is trapped between 0 and R0. And R sub 0 is some other quotient times R1 plus a new remainder, where that remainder is trapped, and so on. Well, eventually, you get to a point where there is no remainder. You get to a point where there is no remainder. Why must we get to a point where there is no remainder? Because the remainders get smaller. And if the remainders get smaller, eventually they have to hit zero. Uh, we don't have infinitely many. This is not infinity. So even if this is 25,973, then in no more than 25,973 steps, there has to be a zero remainder. There has to be. So when this happens, the greatest common divisor of A and B is this last R sub T. The greatest common divisor of A and B is that R sub T. Why? Because the greatest common divisor of A and B is the greatest common divisor of B and R0. The greatest common divisor of B and R0 is the greatest common divisor of R0 and R1, is the greatest common divisor of this and that. And the greatest common divisor of this and that is this quotient sitting right here. Nope, that's wrong. The greatest common divisor of this and that, because R sub T divides R sub T minus 1, is R sub T. That's the deal. Uh, because R sub T divides R sub T minus 1, it is the greatest common divisor of those two numbers, which is the greatest common divisor of those two numbers. Why? We apply the lemma over and over and over again. It must work. So how does it work? If I'm looking for the greatest common divisor of 261 and 36, I recognize that 261 is 7 times 36 plus 9. And then that's a B, that's an R. 36 happens to be 4 times 9, no remainder. And once we have no remainder, that is the GCD of 261 and 36. And this process helps us to establish greatest common divisors without having to use factor trees. Hope that's helpful. Uh, this sort of thing is valuable. You'll see why in the reading if you haven't done the reading yet, and you'll see why when we get to class when we get to class. We'll see you then.